Hello and welcome to the Social Media Magic Podcast, the perfect podcast for TPT sellers, teacherpreneurs, and teacher business owners who consider themselves to be introverts. Each episode shares all kinds of ideas, tips, tactics, and strategies to help you make more sales and grow your community on social media. Without further ado, let's get on to today's episode. Hello and welcome to the Social Media Magic Podcast. My name is Brittany Verlenich. I'm your host. I'm a social media strategist, community manager, and basically I just love to nerd out about all things social media and marketing. And I'm really on a mission to help make social media fun again. I think that's what it started with. That's when we all loved it. And the reason that so many of us hate it, usually not because you consider yourself introverted, it's because you see it as a laborious chore task. Ooh, that could be a whole episode on its own. But today I wanna answer a frequently asked question. The question is, what is the best platform for marketing as a TPT seller, as a teacherpreneur, as a teacher business owner? Now, I need to put an asterisk here and say that depending on what kind of thing you're selling, and we'll talk about that in a second, your best platform might actually be different. I know that TikTok, as of when I'm recording this, TikTok is the hot thing right now. Everybody's flocking to it. But what people don't understand about social media is one of the reasons that so many people had such great success on TikTok when it first started is because the platform was smaller. So naturally there was less competition. You didn't have to have super amazing videos because it was new and people were still exploring and having fun. But anytime something becomes more established, just as it has with Pinterest, with YouTube, with even blogs, you'll see that it gets more finessed over time which means more competition, which means fewer views, less reach, all of those things. So I don't want you to get discouraged and thinking, oh, I have to go on TikTok now and add another platform to my plan. Or if you have just started, maybe you're just starting out or you haven't started anything yet and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have to have an account on TikTok and Instagram and I have to have a Facebook group and I have to have a Facebook page and a blog and a podcast and a YouTube channel. It is exhausting even just saying that. And that overwhelm stops us from making any kind of needle making decision or action taking to be able to help us make money. So let's not do that. Let's start with what we need to do right now. So the first thing you want to do, I'm going to be giving you a few questions to answer because truly the answer to this question, which marketing platform is best for you is going to depend on who you are and where you are in your business. Now, some people recommend that you go by personality. While I think that can be helpful, I don't love that suggestion because there are some amazing creators on TikTok and on Instagram who are introverted. So I don't want you to use your natural abilities or personality. I don't want you to use that as a crutch and a reason or an excuse for you to not put yourself out there because no matter where you put yourself out there, People are going to come to know you, your face, your voice, your brand, your thoughts, your opinions, your services, and everything requires us putting ourselves out there. It just depends on how you want to do that and where your people are. So before everybody says, well, everybody's on TikTok, you could argue the same thing that everybody's on Instagram, everybody's on Facebook, everybody's on YouTube. There are billions of people on all those platforms. What you have to decide is where are people buying? That's another one. If that's your goal or what is your goal? Here are a few different goals that you could have as an example. One might be to grow your email list. Maybe you've noticed that anytime you do any kind of email marketing campaign, that is really successful. You've seen results of that. You've heard everybody use the statistic that you get a 44% return on email. And so you say, you know what? I'm going to focus on email marketing. Then figure what would be the best platform to help you grow your email list. I'll talk about the how in a second. Another goal is to directly sell digital products, which if you sell, if you have a store on Teachers Pay Teachers, you're selling digital products. In that case, consider which platform would be best to help me drive traffic to those products and how can I showcase those products with the content I have? Honestly, those are gonna be the questions that you have no matter which platform you use, but there are some platforms who are inherently better for different types of content, which we're gonna talk about in a second. Maybe you don't have a digital product business or maybe you just wanna focus on some services you're offering. Maybe you offer photography or you design websites for people. Maybe you're a social media manager yourself and you're trying to figure out how can I get more leads for my services and my packages. Your process might be slightly different than someone who is going to sell digital products. The reason for this is simply volume. We don't need to have tens of thousands of people look at our services. We can't even serve that many people if we're service providers, right? So you actually don't have to get in front of as many people as someone who's trying to sell a $3 resource. 
If you are selling digital products, then yes, you are going for volume. You want as many people to see your item as possible, the right people, of course, but you just have a lower price product. And so you need to sell more to make the same amount as someone offering a service or package. I hope it makes sense. And so that means your strategy is going to be slightly different no matter what platform you choose, but which platform you choose does make a difference. And we'll talk about why in a second. So you need to know what is your goal? Are you trying to grow your email list? Are you selling digital products? Are you trying to get more leads for your services or your packages? Maybe you're just building brand awareness. Many big companies use social media for this reason. They just want people to know they're out there. And brand awareness, it sounds kind of funny because when we think of that, we think of, oh, being aware of something means like, oh, coming to awareness, like, oh, hey, that's there. But that's not really the best description because if we think about McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Ford, these are big brands and companies that are really established. They've been around for a really long time. We know who they are and we know that they are there. But brand awareness is more than that. It's more about bringing something to the top of someone's awareness. If you need to buy a laptop and you keep seeing ads pop up for Dell, you say, oh, that's right, I need to buy my laptop. So it's really about, if you think about it, we are competing for the intention, excuse me, for the attention of our customers and consumers. And we're competing with a whole bunch of different other things, not just other brands and companies in our niche, but also outside of our niche, also with their pet, also with whatever else is going on in the world. We're all competing for attention. And ultimately, when it comes down to it, social media is about first catching someone's attention and then we come into their awareness. That's the first thing I want you to think about is what is your goal? Brand awareness, growing your email list, selling digital products, selling a service. Think about that. Now, I don't want to completely rule out personality. I do want to just say that whatever your personality is, I am hyper extroverted, but I still have very limited energy. You know, I can go really hard for a few days, maybe a week, and then I am down for the count. I need a few days to rest. So I have to think about that. For me, it makes more sense to batch content. And now I don't always do this with social media because that's a little bit different. When I say batch content, I mean long form content, long as in L-O-N-G. Long form content includes blog posts, podcast episodes, and YouTube videos. And so I can batch those. I try to record multiple at one time. So that way I have less of a chance of me skipping weeks or getting episodes out there late. That's something I'm still working on, but it's something that I found works for me. And it might work for you too, especially just because the idea of context switching when your brain has to switch between different tasks, it is very tiring on your mind. So the more that you can bundle different tasks together, the easier it's going to be on your brain and your working memory. So I don't want you to use your personality as an excuse or a crutch and not put yourself out there. One thing you can do is think about what do you like? Maybe not your personality, but your preferences. Instagram is kind of becoming another TikTok, I'm not going to lie, but there are still some foundational differences between how content is consumed on each platform and how the users use it. On Instagram, there are still people sharing photos, sharing carousel posts, and there are people still reading and engaging, and they're having lots of conversation in text both ways, right? The person who's creating the content and the person who's consuming it. There's a chance to slow down. And aesthetics are still important there. You want to have nice, pretty, cohesive branding. I'm not saying that your brand itself has to be pretty and pink, but it does have to be visually appealing. So be thinking about that. How can you integrate your brand into all of your text posts, carousels, even the covers that you use for reels if you are already on Instagram? If you're trying to decide which platform to use, Instagram is very visually heavy. So be thinking about, is this a platform where I can plan in advance so that all of my posts and photos kind of look the same? With TikTok, it's much more gritty and real, and I think of it as user-generated content. Those are kinds of the videos that you watch, and it looks like someone could have recorded it in a car. They're not really putting much effort into it, seemingly. People still do. And while I do think that TikTok is changing a little bit, you know the platform is about two years old now, it's starting to get a little more refined, a little more aesthetically pleasing. It's not as refined as Instagram, and that is why people have liked it. People have felt like it's more authentic. Again, authentic, what does that mean? That's gonna be a future podcast episode. You know what I mean. When you're scrolling on TikTok, you expect different kinds of content. It's more like, almost like what we had seen on Instagram stories before, I think is a good way to explain it. It's behind the scenes of someone's life. It's someone sharing their thoughts and opinions, just value, like, hey, I found this out, is cool. It's more peer to peer, whereas Instagram, there's a little bit more of assumed authority, at least I have found. Okay. And then one thing you got to consider is your tech knowledge. A lot of people get intimidated by video. Now I'm not going to lie and say that video doesn't matter. It definitely does. It's a huge trend in marketing in general, not just for the year that this came out in 2022, but beyond that. Although it is interesting to think what will be next. 
I actually have a big idea that audio will start trending again because I think more people want to get away from screens after having so much video, but I might be a little bit ahead of my time. So it'll be interesting to see how this podcast episode ages in one to two years if audio will be making a big takeover. That's my prediction. We'll see how it goes. But video is hot right now, and it's easy to see why. There have been so many people starting online businesses, starting different marketing channels. I mean, even me, I have multiple things. It can be hard to know if someone's legit, but when someone's on video, you can see their personality, you can see their face, their inflection, you can see whether or not they mean what they're saying, their facial expressions, and it just goes so much further. It helps to build that know, like, and trust factor. They have to feel like they know you. If they don't feel like they know you, it's gonna be impossible for them to trust you. And I think that's why people like TikTok, because you really feel like you get to know the actual person behind someone trying to look professional or polished. And then of course, the nature of the content matters. And this applies to long form content too, like blogging, podcasting, and YouTube. For example, if you don't know how to edit videos, you're gonna have a much longer and harder time, at least at first, but you'll learn you'll get there with YouTube than you would with writing a blog post. If you hate writing, then you might like podcasting more. Especially, I know podcasting is getting hot with people when they're realizing, oh, I don't have to dress up, I don't have to put makeup on, I don't have to spend a whole bunch of time writing. So podcasting is getting more and more appealing to people who have businesses and who want to position themselves as authorities online, serve their communities, and create content. But the nature of the content matters too. So for example, if I wanted to show you all a new feature that Facebook groups came out with, or who knows what platforms will be available in the future, maybe I discover a new platform and I'm playing with it and I wanna show you how it works, I might screen share my phone or I might show a tutorial on the computer. I might screen share it. In that case, video would make more sense. And so that might be something I upload to my YouTube channel. If I am typing out a guide that's more step-by-step and maybe it's customizable, like certain steps you can include, certain steps you don't have to, a blog post might actually be better because then you can go through that blog post, use it as your guide, as your instructions, you can skip what you don't need and you can go back and reread it as many times as you need to. And then finally, if you are just learning ideas or you're you're pondering or maybe you're just there for entertainment, podcasts can be entertainment too. There's all kinds of true crime podcasts and comedy podcasts. In that case, listening is okay because you're consuming the content while you're doing something else on your way to work, on your way home, at the gym, walking your dog, etc. So you wanna be thinking about the nature of the content and the way that people consume the content. Those things are gonna make a big difference into what platform you use, which platform you you show up on, and also just how you relate to other people. That's kind of in that too. That's one of the reasons I've loved Facebook groups. I felt like it's this amazing mix of everything. You've got the user-generated content with the live videos. You have the polished content by sharing photos and videos, all that stuff that's already pre-curated. You have the in-person interaction with the live streams. You have rooms, which means people can actually show their faces just like a Zoom room. I love it. I love Facebook groups as of right now. I really do think they're the best platforms for building communities, but we'll see what happens in the future. I don't wanna say that one thing will be the forever thing. And of course, you also have to consider where your audience is. I mentioned this before in the beginning of the episode that people are everywhere. I know it's easy for us to look at TikTok and think it's a hot thing right now or Instagram reels, right? But that's as of right now. And that's over a very short amount of time. It'll be interesting to see what happens in a few years. We also have to consider how people are. We are very fickle, right? As soon as we have something for a while, it gets stale, we're onto something new. And sometimes we'll even go retro, just like how 90s clothes are in fashion. And we'll go back to something else that was kind of the quote unquote OG. That's one of the reasons I think that podcasting is gonna come out strong. And I also predict that people will be reading blogs again. That's just my prediction. I just think it'll look a little bit different. Really, really cool to see though. We'll see what happens. But you do wanna consider where your audience is and you wanna consider if they are on Facebook more, then yes, you should definitely be marketing more there. If they are active on Instagram, then yes, Reels might be a better use of your time than TikTok. So do a little bit of polling, see where people are and ask the right people, by the way. Don't just ask your friends and family on Facebook because those are your friends and family. Try to go where people already are and that's kind of hard. Going to going to where they already are, asking where they hang out. I know that's tough, but you can ask, maybe if you're still a teacher in the classroom, you can ask the teachers at your school, hey, where do you usually hang out at? Which platform do you use most? And don't just ask them which platform they use most, but how they use it. Because I'll tell you, my husband and I were just talking about this the other day. He was, he scrolls on TikTok, like, like how someone else watches TV. That's his entertainment, but he does not buy anything off of there. He does not go and follow anyone off of there. He just uses it for entertainment and sometimes learning. So you have to consider that. TikTok could be really great if you wanna have a brand awareness strategy. You want people to know about you, but is it the best for converting people into leads or emails or paying customers? Hard to say, and I'm sure people have figured it out and I can't wait to find those people and bring them on the podcast for you. But you do wanna be looking at that. What 
is the nature of the platform? What kind of content does well there? Does it make sense for what you want to share with people? And is it where people are? And does it match with your goals? Those are all the questions to ask yourself. And I'll be sure to type those out into the episode description. So if you go into your podcast app and you look at the episode description, you should be able to see those questions out there. All right, that's it for now. I can't wait to hear from you. What did you think about the episode? What are you looking to market on? Which platform are you going between? You can send me a DM on Instagram over at Brittany Berlinich. As always, I will link that in the episode description and I'll see you next time.